Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Tense channel. My name is John Simmerman, and this is part two of my run-in with the Urbanists at CMU 32 in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, we are going to be heading into the Over the Rhine District. Let's pick up with Andrew Gastbray. Ohio is the cradle of bad presidents. Uh, he was not one of them in terms of bad, but he was ineffective because he was murdered. Okay, he was assassinated. Uh, brilliant guy from northern Ohio, but despite that he was brilliant, no, I'm kidding. Um, he, he could write uh, Latin with uh, one hand and Greek with the other hand at the same time. Really bright guy. It was actually just one of the first, uh, kind of our equivalent of Jack the Ripper, a kind of a serial killer, stabbed him, and given the crappy uh, medicine at the time, sepsis kept in, and he had a miserable months long death that was horrible. But this was named after him, he had some big plans for the country, and actually it's kind of a shame that they replaced it with really crappy presidents. This is Central Parkway. Kind of divides Cincinnati into two portions, uh, derogatorily called the Rhine. Because this used to be the Erie Canal. So the Erie Canal came through along here. All the new Germans coming into town, all those Germans. Now, the fact that my last name is Gas has nothing to do with it, even though I'm from Cincinnati. No. Um, uh -huh. but uh, they were kind of, it was a it was a ghetto. It was a German ghetto for a while. And so there was a real derogatory thought about over the Rhine. And so they, that's why they called it over, over the Rhine. But it then became a source of pride. And so this didn't last that long. The Erie Canal came in, railroad sunk it. And uh, this is sort of a classic thing. I want to cheat a little bit because we're not going to get to see all the way up. They, then replaced it later with the subway. The only, one of the few subways that was completed and never used. They had the tunnels and everything. Uh, part of the tunnels up at the university uh, were used for wind tunnel experiments and those are still in the best shape because obviously they need to maintain it. But it's just funny because every time they do something in Cincinnati they stop, which is why Mark Twain famously said about Cincinnati, oh, if the world were to end tomorrow, I think I should go to Cincinnati. Everything <laughs> happens seven years later. All right, we've got everybody, are we all Almost scored in, you're good, take your time, we're all good. All right, this is the Uber den Rhein district of Cincinnati. I pointed out the German writing over the uh, church. There, you could find a lot of that earlier when I was a kid still, because uh, they preserved their German heritage. Everything was bilingual for a very long time, including it was mandatory in the Cincinnati public school system to learn German up until 1964. Wow. So, um, yeah, in a lot of places, Indiana has a bilingual um, a constitution for the same reason. Lots of Germans came in. We talked about their coming in. Really key for a lot of factors. Of the things that they loved that they brought in from the old world to the new world. Vultural reasons, we could talk some other time about why they came, because that's another fascinating history. But they built this 
in the latter half of the uh, 19th century. It is a gem. It is world-class center and it has uh, perpetuated the arts in Cincinnati long beyond when they were the center. That was yesterday. Cincinnati was like the bomb, the place to be. Uh, that's why it was so wealthy, was able to afford the first baseball team, professional baseball team, etc. We were cooking with gas. You pass the Kroger building, Kroger was a little grocer on the corner, I think 7th Street, and he uh, was famous for saying, you have to be willing what your competition is not, and he's been very successful uh, ever since. Um, talking one last thing about the German, um, that's really interesting for me because it affected the Cincinnati dialect. Instead of saying, excuse me or pardon me, especially if you don't hear, they, the, Amer uh, the Cincinnatians say, please. You, you can always tell somebody who's grew up in Cincinnati from that. I expunge that because people go, what? Yeah, but that's from the German Bitte. And so, which is how the Germans would do that. Uh, the Germans also did one other big thing, and, uh, and then we're gonna get going. Germans brought in the pigs, okay? Because as we said yesterday, it was very expensive to ship things up river uh, up the Ohio River to get to the East Coast, which is the market. So they fed it to pigs. They certainly knew how to do pigs. They done pigs so well, this place was called Porkopolis. And Porkopolis, uh, because they developed curing techniques that became world famous. Um, those who had dinner with me last night know that they invented, or not invented, but they popularized the white bratwurst from Germany, which in Germany, it's more pink, uh, most of them, because the most of the recipes are. But they were so good at it, white is now the standard and that actually probably came from cincinnati the fat from those pig houses ended up getting rendered into candles and soap starting procter and gamble and that was done here and so you can see the connectedness one last little bit you notice that this is cobbles i learned a lot more I'm, i actually got started as an engineer cobbles there is uh the the big alley was brick that's now covered over and the side alley was actually wood ends because of the different capacities and the nature of the street. Since this is in front of their one of their showcases, they have the most durable and nicest surface for this street and for the less traffic, etc. accordingly. We urbanists have learned from that. I like that one. I was part of the efforts trying to make this go when I was a young lad, uh, young in my career. My buddy was a rebuilder, and we uh, opened the first theater in the theater district. You see, that's didn't, we didn't make it, but uh, you all have to be the first pioneer. Uh, that was right across from uh, 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 Music Hall. Okay. But the rest has really come forward. You can see how lovely they've done. Finley Market obviously served this district for it's the oldest 
uh, continuously operated market, open air marketplace, and that game now closed marketplace, but still open uh, in Ohio. It's uh, and probably the Midwest. So beautiful place, great place to go, um, and we're gonna move along. Okay, everybody, we are in the heart of the brewery district. It's got a lot of hardworking Germans from the Neckar Valley. Keep them going in the summer. Another Cincinnati invention. Uh, remember, it was a time before refrigeration, so uh, they needed a beer to last the summer, and they had this recipe that they used in Germany, but they didn't have access to all the same materials, ingredients, so they invented American Bach almost right here. This, the Rheingeist Brewery is right there. Nice view from the, the top of it. Um, it itself, it was the bottling plant of the Christian Marline, which was one of the biggest distributors of beer in the United States at the time. Prohibition killed it. And uh, I tried to come back, and so you see it mentioned all the time. Uh, I hear that the original recipes are going to be coming out within less than a year. The one that they sell downtown, lovely, but not the original recipe. I could talk about that some other time, but um, we do want to stay on track. Uh, so, Ryan guys, at the end was Jackson Brewery, also a very big producer, one that did it, but it burned down like four times. That's a checkered history. If you want to see something fun, look at the history of that puppy, and we're going to be heading back this way. But they had like dozens of brewery. Oh wait, one thing I forgot. Oh my god, this is the fun, the most fun part. Okay, so up there, that's Clifton, okay, where they moved the, the university to. Nice, beautiful view. Guess what they put up there? The jail. Water tower. Okay, right? So why are the breweries here? Breweries are here because they got the water, easy access to water. And remember, you got materials, you got uh, barley, uh, malted barley, you got water, and a little yeast, okay? All right, so that basically makes beer, and then he produces it in these big barrels. Do you want to schlep those all the way up to the water? No, you bring the water down and you be north, uh, you're uphill from your big market, so it's easier to get the, the, the barrels there. Okay, the other advantage of being breweries on a hillside is that the process is very vertical. So you drop the things in the top and they make the wort, etc. And so it all kind of works by gravity. So that's why this is the brewery district. Okay? Subway, keep an eye on that for me. So they never ended up really working both. Okay? So as a result, this has stayed and it got devolved and the replacement for the subway is right parallel, which is I-75 to your question, which ruined the prospects for the subway. See the pattern in Cincinnati? So uh, I, I kind of love it, you know, as a uh, 
a hobbyist uh, historian. Right over there uh, is where they had uh, Crosley Field. The first night game of baseball was right over there, the, one of the first major stadiums. Pal Crosley. How does this guy look like dry? <laughs> <laughs> something that's going to generate listeners and it was in the center of the country at the time uh, if you look at the centroid it actually is very close and mm -hmm. so most of the stars from the Midwest came here to get success Rosemary Clooney the aunt of George Clooney um, you had people like uh, oh gosh I'm, I'm blanking out yeah, Sarah yeah, Sarah Sarah yes Sarah Depart yes with Carter but she's more recent. She didn't come because of that. But um, so uh, Steve McQueen, uh, uh, even oh, wow. Tom Cruise sort of came from the legacy because he's from Indiana there. Uh, but this was a real haven for that. And WLW could still be heard at night uh, because they allow it to go up to 50,000 watts and project across the country. It's done to maintain security uh, for the country so that if something goes down, we have a backup method of finding out information. So we're going to head that way. This is rather nice. Check this out. Again, this feeds into the MLS stadium for the football club, FC Cincinnati. MLS soccer, Major League Soccer. Again, really nice to have this level of detail to encourage more people to get to the game via bike. And we see the transition back down to the uh, lower level. The roadbed, still a nice parking protected and curb protected bikeway. This is the first protected bikeway that I've seen in the city of Cincinnati. Well done getting to the soccer stadium. See the integration with the transit stop. plenty of time we're gonna go down that way but I want to use it that's the back end of the music hall 
this. Oh, I don't know if you saw uh, Warner Brothers pictures, to my point. Um, they do for whatever, because it's a good centralized location, big on the arts, have huge investment in the arts. Uh, the University of Cincinnati, Cincinnati has an amazing program that is world famous, gets uh, starker and lots of these really great people. Anyhow, that is the pu a public uh, radio station. I've been in the booth with my best friend at the time, late at night when no one was listening, whispering some facts to um, what was going on. Wonderful asset, great uh, jazz. As you've seen, there's also a jazz museum there, and it's great classical. Oh, what was that smell that we used to have? It smelled like fruit. Ah, that was probably the breweries going. Okay, that fruity smell is probably the malted barley that you're smelling which makes the sugar come out of the barley. And that's why it's, but it could have been, if it's a little drier, it's probably the hops, which is like a tea, but it's very dry. It helps preserve the beer along with the alcohol. And that's what they added to the American Bach recipe so it could last the summer. We are on Ezra Charles uh, Drive, probably the most famous uh, boxer you've never heard of. He's the only one to not get knocked out by Rocky Marciano. He was the world heavyweight champion for a while. Um, had the tremendous, uh, but he had Louis Gehrig's disease. So most of the rest of his career after he was the world champion and then kind of set back, um, was trying to take care of people with diseases and he was a big spokesperson for it. So they named this boulevard after him, which goes out and you'll see, uh, I will try to get you to see the largest Hemi Dome in the world, Union Terminal. Uh, most of this information that I have can be found at the Cincinnati Historical Society, which has also got a, a, a stop up there. It's the Western District. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, okay. as soon as we get across the street. Um, I just wanted you to be able to see, because you get a better route. When we go across this street, I want you to look down. This is all, I think, part of one of the Hope Projects. Beautiful redone. This was a historically African-American neighborhood. There are plaques to lots of big, significant events in Cincinnati history in regards to, because remember, this was the first stop in free territory for the slaves. So they tended to land here. So their ability uh, to promote and bring uh, uh, the uh, African-Americans into the fold was here in this district and started, it was the first, one of the first teachers to bring uh, teaching of uh, African-Americans up to white standards. Obviously wasn't big popular at the time, but, um, and he was ousted for that very reason, but it's still really quite a remarkable neighborhood. And it kind of shows what I'd like to say is that, you know, sometimes by inattention, you unwittingly, like OTR, you didn't knock it down in time. Now it becomes an opportunity. I like to think of this Western side um, as being part of that. But as you might guess, why did this get completely decimated? The highway came through. It was all part of that environmental justice where, oh, Progress. that's not important. Yes, Progress. that's right. So we have a jaded, jaded <laughs> pass along those lines. And that is, for those of you here, that's Union Terminal at the end and the museum center. Great stuff there, highly recommended. Uh, the one last thing I'll say about it is it was part with Mabley and Karoo Tower where we're staying, the Tower Art Deco. Beautiful, beautiful mosaic tiles hanging from there. We're representing the history of Cincinnati. Absolutely an amazing place. Um, used to be the train station. Trains are along there. And that's why they brought the highway down there, but they moved it sideways to wipe out the neighborhood to follow that right away pattern. And uh, definitely, definitely worth your time. Uh, those buildings were uh, bought uh, or contracted days, I think, before the crash. And as a result, uh, in, the, the, uh, in 29. So they're the last big famous Art Deco, so they're kind of the cream of the crop. So when you go back to the hotel, note that it is sort of like the, the culmination of that. And that was really kind of the end of the heyday of Cincinnati, I might add. So, all right? After the Depression. After the Depression. Even though we survived, other people came back stronger, particularly Detroit. Oh, incidentally, uh, Ford came to Cincinnati first because of the carriage works. We produced all the carriages, most of the carriages for the country. So we thought it would be a horse's carriage, perfect. 
no, 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 we don't really want to do that here. Uh, no, there's no future in that. And then he went to Detroit. But it saved your city because they demolished all of Detroit. So yeah, that's right. I, that's yeah, exactly yeah. where I got. Yeah. Well, you can get this tour next. American side and uh, uh, a place that was the bottomlands and if you notice everything drops okay this is the old Ohio River bank that you're on you see it drops down the Ohio River used to flow north-south until the last ice age and so it created this huge path that is this wide fertile valley that ended up replacing the um, and where a lot of that, those grains and things we were talking about, all that sediment getting deposited there. And so it was unfettered, all farmland got converted to industry, including General Electric. And I started with that there yesterday, party yesterday, one of the founders of this area, another story. Um, but I just wanted you to see that because things change and it opens up new opportunities. Historically, prehistorically, and certainly for Cincinnati, sometimes being a little slow to act is a benefit. We're gonna head this way. this great space you see that we've got a project with the urban street uh, stuff going on early uh, tactical urbanism that city hall beautiful Richardsonian for those in architecture uh, I are engineers so don't quiz me too much on it um, this is St. Peter in Chains the Cathedral Basilica in Cincinnati beautiful acoustics they have lots of especially um, church music festivals here that are absolutely stunning and most interesting for me, Rabbi Isaac Meyer Wise, the, the, no, he's, he started the reform movement of Judaism here in Cincinnati. It was the, the theological uh, heart of uh, Judaism for a very long time and still is considered they have a really extensive library, etc. It just goes to show that even though you have those enclaves and they're wonderful, they have a downside and they have an upside. But given that uh, racism and discrimination tends to find new bedfellows every time, you'll notice Catholic, Jewish, German immigrants, African American, they just wanted them away from the, uh, the, the upper crust of Cincinnati, but then they started brain bumping and getting along, which is I think a, a marker of uh, you know, again, opportunity where you where you think it's least likely to not. Any questions? Because we're heading back now. What's the relationship between the four feet up in Cincinnati in terms of like flow of people for work, commerce, etc.? Because it seems very like separate. Yeah, and different. Yes. Well, when I was a kid, you, the only thing to rival over the Rhine in terms of scariness was Newport, Kentucky. That was the red light district. So, you know, 
And if you go over there, same because there's some beautiful buildings that were just like Covington right on the river. Most of those are gone. I mean, they had a great, great area for that. But, you know, they had fallen down into more disrepair than Covington. Covington was a little bit wealthier. And so it kind of got squidgy. And as a result, they almost raised it. But they did raise the stuff on the river to make that great levee because in Covington, as you saw, those beautiful mansions were still well, maintained well enough to keep them. And so you don't get right on. So the most interesting thing about Covington is actually their main square called Mainstrasse Village. Beautiful German history, the half timber, absolutely gorgeous. Lots of things around it, but that's not right on the river. So Newport took advantage of that with the aquarium, largest uh, collection of riverine uh, aquatic life. I think at the time it was in the world, I don't know if it still is, but still a remarkable, remarkable place. Definitely worth to jump across the Purple People Bridge, which is a former railroad bridge they converted for pedestrians. Well, folks, that's all she wrote. We're heading back to the hotel now. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, into the Over the Rhine District and picking up on some of the history of Cincinnati. Really do appreciate it. Hey, if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Uh, just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And hey, a special thanks heading out to Andrew Gast Bray for leading the run this year. Thank you so much, Andrew. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.